In this presentation, uh, uh, I will present how you can download, retrieve, use in your own pipeline those data. And in the next presentation, Mark is going to show you how you can make use of the tools, uh, of some tools that are willing to, to, to obtain more knowledge about this gene expression. Just a second. Just checking, yeah, okay. So first about uh, what you are allowed to do with our data. Uh, so it is about the license. So the license is CC0. Uh, it means that you can basically do anything you want with data. It's not even mandatory to cite us. Uh, of course, we would appreciate if you do, if you make use of our data, we would much appreciate if you cite us in your publication. But it's not even mandatory, and, and the advantage of, of this license is that we can then uh, provide our data in a variety of tools that require the data to be CC0. It is the case, for instance, uh, in Wikidata, which is like the backbone uh, for Wikipedia for, for producing uh, a structured data in Wikipedia. Notably, it is used also independently of, Wiki, of Wikipedia, but so Wikidata require all the structured data information in there to be CC0 uh, to, 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 to allow integration of any data there. Okay, so we're going to start just like as a warm up, uh, a WOOC lab uh, about, about this data to make sure it's very clear to everyone. So Mark, maybe if you can uh, launch the, the WOOC lab uh, about BG data is... It's been launched. So please, if you can go to the same WooClap link. Uh, so BG data is available upon request, freely available or available from NCBI. Just to make sure it's totally clear to everyone. Okay, so it is totally clear to everyone. <laughs> so exactly, it's freely available, completely free of use, no citation required. Uh, yeah, you can really do anything you want with those data, no restriction whatsoever for commercial use or not, okay? Okay, so there are various ways to retrieve the data and we provide this data in, in different formats, okay? So the most basic format are the TSV file, tabulated separated files uh, that we provide in, in different flavors. E either you are only interested, so first we provide one file per species and there are simple or advanced files. So simple file, you will only file find the calls of expression basically and the conditions and the advanced file you will find much more information like you will find the p-values per data type if you want to use only one single data type and not the integration over also affi matrix and in situ abbreviation for instance uh, you will find information of expression score uh, per data type as well so the number of samples so in the advanced file we provide as much information as we can but it means that the file is much larger. So it might be more practical to use a simple file. And we provide either anatomy uh, on the file where you have only the information at the organ level or a file with all condition parameters, meaning uh, anatomy, developmental stage, sex, and strain as well. But again, the file is then larger. Um, and so those are to retrieve the expression calls that we presented in the previous presentation, but you can also retrieve the process data for your own analysis, for instance, uh, with the TPM values for each gene. So uh, it means that we, we, we retrieve the FASTQ file and processed it. So 
for single cell data, taking into account the protocol used, the position of the barcode, the UMI, as I presented. And then you can directly download these TPM values processed uh, along with information for each library, the annotation of each library. So this is what we call the process data. So we have these two types of data, either the calls or the process data of actual expression levels for each sample. Uh, so this is an example of the type, the kind of information you can retrieve in this file. So you will have the gene ID and the gene name, the Uberon anatomical entity ID and name. Uh, when it is single cell data, you will, you will also have the cell type ID and cell type name, uh, developmental stage, stage name, so blastula, for instance, sex information. In that case, the sex information was not provided, so it is NA, or the strain information. And you see in the simple file, you will have the expression code present, the code quality based on the FDRP value, gold. And you will also have the actual FDRP value and the expression score. Uh, and in the process data, data file, then you will retrieve really information of read count, uh, TPM value, also if FPKM value for historical reason, the actual, actual rank of the gene in that sample, and, and the detection flag and the p-value from that one single sample, meaning without the integration by propagation, all of that, you really look in one library independently, you see the p-value of your gene expression in that library. And we also reprovide uh, the, the annotation, and we also provide information about the, 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 the protocol, the sequencing technology used, whether it was paired end or single end read, uh, three prime end, uh, all of that. Uh, so how can you retrieve this data? So you can go uh, either on the BG website. On the BG website, you will have links like that. So if you go to the download section, a specific species. So here it is for the process data. So you can have the bulk analytic data, process or matrix data, the single cell. So for now on the on the current release, it's the full lens data, but I will show you the annotation of droplet-based data as well. Uh, and we have an R package called BGDB. Uh, it is available from Bioconductor. So uh, with this package, you can ask, for instance, give me all the libraries that are available in brain, uh, in human brain or in mouse brain, okay? And you can retrieve this process gene expression data. And we provide functions so that you can reformat your data into an expression set object. So an expression set object is used in many packages for downstream analysis. So you can just identify all the relevant data in the conditions you are interested in, process them as expression set objects for any downstream analysis. And so you can refer to the documentation uh, on, on Bioconductor. And also, of course, you can reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, and we also have, so it's more for computational biologists here. We have also a Sparkle endpoint. Uh, so Sparkle endpoints, it allows for people not very familiar with Sparkle endpoint. It's a way to uh, interrogate a database and perform federated queries uh, between many databases. So using a Sparkle endpoint, you can ask to BG, give me the genes expressed in the human brain. And at Uniprot, you can ask at the same time, which have the gene ontology annotation, I don't know, uh, neuron development, okay? So it means that Thanks to this Sparkle endpoint, you, you can make sense of BG data along with many other data available in other databases, okay? Uh, and we provide also a web interface uh, at biosoda.expasi.org allowing to, to perform this kind of federated query, uh, but with a nice user interface if you're like, it still requires you to be able to write Sparkle queries, but we provide examples of queries. So, you can find a queries that match your need and just edit it if you are unfamiliar with this language. Uh, and so the maybe the most user-friendly way uh, to, to, to see the annotation, to browse the annotation is using the, the web interface. And uh, so I'm gonna do a live demo uh, of this, but just to tell you, so first, uh, 
you have the, the production version of BG at BG.org, where you can browse all the data that have been integrated in that current release of BG. And we have a, a mirror site, mirror site annotations.bg.org, where you can see the data that we have already annotated, but not yet fully integrated with data propagation, calls of expression into the production release of BG. Okay, so we have these two websites, one where you can see really the information currently integrated, and the other one where you can see the information that is going to be integrated in the next release, but that has already been annotated. So for instance, this is where you can find annotation for the fly cell atlas that we have performed. We have annotated it. It's not yet uh, in, the, in the release of BG. Um, it's going to be soon released, but not yet. So I'm going to just show you how to walk through this web interface to, to, to make the, the queries to retrieve annotations. Share my screen again. If I manage to, yeah. Okay, so here I have these two windows. Uh, so bg.org, and you have this link, raw data annotations here. So these are the information in the current release of BG, but maybe I'm going to use annotations that bg.org to show you the annotation of the fly cell atlas, okay? So an annot annotation that bg.org, you only have access to the annotation. You don't have access uh, to, to, the, the, to the gene search, all of that. You only have access to the annotations, okay? And in single cell analytic data, so we have one tab per data type here, and we have like three types of information. Uh, the experiments listed, then the raw data annotation, meaning really the samples uh, with their annotation. And you see that we have many information, so the table is quite large. Uh, and we have then the process expression values, meaning the actual TPM value, read count for each gene in each sample. So it's much more data, of course, okay? So if I start from the experiment, and if I just browse like that, the single cell analytic data, so you see that for now, we don't have so many experiments. We have only seven annotated, but each experiment is already hundreds of thousands of cells uh, for droplet-based technology. So uh, for the fly cell atlas alone, we have like several hundreds of conditions represented. So I'm gonna focus on that maybe. And first, like you can just browse the information for one specific experiment uh, by following this link here. So if you go to this page, you will have a description of the experiment, a link to the source data uh, here in the sequence read archive, probably at, at, at CCBI, SRA. So you can go back to the original unannotated data. And uh, so here you will have, see the annotation of each cluster uh, in the fly cell atlas. Because as I mentioned, for single cell droplet base, we do pseudo bulk. So we annotate at the cluster level and we pull all the cells part of the same cluster to perform the present absent calls. So here, it means that we have uh, 1,518 conditions representing the fly cell atlas, meaning the different cell types in different developmental stage for different sexes, for instance, okay? So you can see here the cell type annotation for each cluster. So there are like many cell types represented in this atlas. So I'm going to change the number of rows I display. So you can see that we have many, many uh, cell types already obtained from this one single experiment. Most of them come from insect head in adult fly. Okay. Uh, we're going to provide information about the technology that has been used, the sequencer that had been used, whether it's a full length technology or in that case, a three prime. Uh, what has been fractionated, whether it was the full cell, uh, I mean, whether it was a full cell or the single nuclei. So fly cell atlas, it's single nuclei data. This is what you see here. Uh, it's per than read. So you, you find different information about the protocols used so that we can reprocess the data yourself if you want, but we provide also process data. At the end of the table, you see a link, browse result to see the actual gene expression values uh, in that specific sample, in that specific cluster from the fly cell atlas. So here in that specific cluster, 
then now for each gene, you're going to see uh, the expression level provided in CPM unit. So it's not TPM because you don't have to correct for gene lengths because it's only three prime N sequencing. And, and you have unique molecular identifier allowing you to know how many transcripts you had before PCR amplification. So the unit use is CPM, okay? Uh, so you have the number of UMIs, the CPM, and we reprovide again the annotation uh, so that it's easier to browse maybe, okay? So that's really like if you're focused on one single experiment, that's the way to, to, to browse the data. Uh, but maybe you're not actually. Uh, maybe you want to, to find all information available in the brain, for instance, in the human brain. So for that, you have this form here. Uh, and the way first you select a species, for instance, human. Uh, you, maybe you're interested in one specific gene. Uh, give me all data containing information for ox, uh, for ox genes, for instance. Uh, but here, for instance, I show you if you want to retrieve information all information available in BG in the human brain, you select the term brain here. And this is an important checkbox here. It asks you whether you want to retrieve data in all substructures of the brain. So it means also the data annotated at the cerebellum, hippocampus level, whatever, you know? So do you want to retrieve data exactly annotated to the brain with no much, no more information? or also all the substructures of the brain. And this is thanks to this checkbox. I would say that in most cases, you want to keep this checkbox, okay? And you can also, for instance, select the sex, the ethnicity, the developmental stage. So for the developmental stage, we present a simplified view of the developmental stage, but then you're gonna retrieve the exact term I'm gonna show you. So here I'm gonna say, I want data fully formed since we need to accommodate many species, uh, the, the, the term is not human specific. So here, what you would like to see probably uh, for prime and post juvenile, probably you would like to see adult, you know, in human. But since we are multi-species database, the labels are more generic, right? So here I'm gonna ask to retrieve all data that we have in BG, bulk seq in the human brain, including all the structure at adult stage. And then, yeah, let's, let's start with that, okay? And I submit. Okay, so it's a bit slow here, of course, live demo. <laughs> so the annotation website is not our main website, so it's a bit slower. Okay, so here first you can see that you retrieve information in the cerebral cortex, even though you didn't specify the term in the first place. It's thanks to the ontology, thanks to the propagation. So sometimes we don't have precise information. The authors only told us it was adult, but sometimes we have the exact age. And since you, you asked to retrieve the child terms, you will retrieve all of that. And here, when it is available, we have the sex information and the ethnicity in the case of humans. So here it was white, Caucasian, female. Uh, okay, and then again, we tell you whether it's full length, uh, the sequencer, the fragmentation, whether it was per end or single end read. Okay, and again, then for each sample, you can go and find the expression levels in that specific sample for each G. Okay. Uh, an interesting feature is that, uh, I mean, so you have this form to make this first, first query, and then you will have filters depending on your query. So it's similar to uh, e-commerce website when you do a first query, and then you can refine your query thanks to filters. So here I ask all data in the adult brain of human, and then I can see actually here all the exact terms that were annotated in the adult brain, adult human brain, okay? So here you can see that we have data in putamen, for instance, and you can refine your query like that. Okay, actually, I want still in my brain query, I would like just temporarily to see all the putamen results, okay? So you can refine your query and it's interesting because you can see all the values actually, anatomical entity in the human brain. You can see all the values, all the ages that have data in the agile brain, okay? And the sexes, we have both male and female, and sometimes we don't know. 
the ethnicity. So we don't have much here because a lot of our data come from GTEC and GTEC do not allow us to release publicly the ethnicity information. So this is why you have confidential restricted data. You can see all the experiments that do include some adult brain information, okay? And you can see also the exact library ID, okay? So, and, and when you browse between experiments or process expression values, you keep the information that you put in the form in the first place. So you can easily browse between these different pages. So the website here is slower, probably maybe because you're playing with it, I guess, some of you, and also because annotations.bg.org is not our production server. It's a server to have a glance at the next annotation being interrogated in BG. Okay. Okay, so I from the BG homepage, I go to raw data annotations, okay? And I'm interested in the dog. So here you get the scientific name, but also the, the, the common name. So I select dog and I'm interested in the brain. So I'm just gonna enter brain. And I want to retrieve all data, including the sub part of the brain. So I'm gonna keep this checkbox checked here, okay? So I submit and yeah, the answer is that if I look at experiments, the number here that you can find either here or here, uh, is that we have 11 experiments uh, that have been performed, including data in the dog brain, okay? So, uh, and then for the samples, it's what we call raw data annotations. We don't call that sample because again, we accumulate several data types for in situ abbreviation data that would be incorrect. For single cell clusters, uh, they are not really different samples. So we call that raw data annotation. So if I click there, uh, the form will have retained my settings, so I don't have to enter it again. And I see that I have 29 bulk RSIC libraries. And you can see here the, the analytical entity. So you can see it's actually, in most cases, sub parts of the brain. And here, in those cases, uh, it means that uh, we didn't have more precise information provided by the authors. We annotated at the brain of it. Or maybe they extracted the whole brain of the, to perform the analysis. Okay. Uh, but it is unlikely considering the size of the dog brain. Uh, so 11 is the correct number of experiments and number of samples, 29. So I guess 28 was a typo. So 63,000, I guess it's a process expression value. No. So I'm not sure uh, how you get that number, uh, Michaelo, if you want to comment maybe. Uh, you can speak as well if you want, but anyway. so um, I, I thought you were speaking about the, the gene expression quantification, but no, I don't see how you get that number. Maybe it would be interesting to know how you get that number. So do not hesitate if you want to comment. And then how can you know the number of clinical entities? So, I mean, it's a bit annoying, but again, using the filters, you can see all the precise terms that were used. So here, yeah, it, it, there is no really other way than counting yourself. <laughs> so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So we have 11 terms representing the dog brain. So sometimes it's brain itself because we didn't have more precise information, but sometimes it's more precise. Cerebellum, cortex, hypothalamus, okay? So we have 11, uh, 11, uh, organs, sorry, uh, sample into the brains, okay? So 10 was also correct, I guess, because you excluded the brain from, from the number. So uh, that was uh, well played by you to, to, to count the information. Uh, okay, and then I ask you to provide the range of expression level in TPM of a specific gene, SRRM4, in the dog cerebellum, so not the brain, okay? So again, you have to go back to, to the interface and play with it. So you need to find the expression level information for that specific gene in that specific tissue, dog cerebellum.
So I'm running again a bit late. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so it will be maybe three, five minutes late. I give you a bit more time to answer this. Can put back the name somewhere. Okay, so I start showing how to do that since we already have quite a few answers. Um, okay, so I go to here process expression values, uh, which is the way to get the, the expression level information. So I'm not interested in brain anymore. So I could that in, in different ways, you know, I could just filter here, for instance, selecting cerebellum, or I could edit my entire query if I wanted. So I'm going to use the filters here. But actually, I forgot that I asked for a specific gene. So I'm going to edit my query here. And I'm going to select SR. Well, I brain here. I'm going to use a filter afterwards. So now I have result only for my specific gene. And I'm going to refine my query to look only at cerebellum. Hey, OK. So here, I really don't have much. I mean, I don't have many rows here. So it means that I had like four libraries uh, in the doc cerebellum so it's pretty easy to see and then yeah the expression level range in tpm go from 8.15 to 30.08 uh, so here is the correct answer and i guess michaelo you provided the read counts i guess right it go from 380 to 2095 so yeah this is what you put so here i asked the expression level in tpm that was the trick okay uh, and here, but you also have the read count information, which is not that useful because you need to normalize by sequencing depth and gene length. Uh, okay, and finally, there is also a, a WooClap. Uh, Mark, uh, if you can launch the WooClap about a favorite way to get BG data, please. So it's for us to understand. Launched. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, please go to the WooClap link and it's for us to understand what, what would, it, would be your preferred way to retrieve this data. It helps us to know what we need to work on and refine, you know? And thanks, Michaelo. I think that you answered my question about how did you get the incorrect answers and that, that you didn't press submit. That's interesting, okay? Because since you have results immediately appearing, you didn't realize that your form was not submitting. Okay, so your favorite ways to get BG data would be uh, either download from web and then our package. Okay. So, so basically download from web, it means that you have this query tool, but then you can click on the link to download data and that would be on the, on the FTP. Uh, the, the files are all hosted on the FTP, but you can browse the FTP directly, but okay. So no fan of Sparkle here and then more used to use R as a programmatic language. So that's helpful for us. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I just like okay, just to 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 finish. Uh, I I since I forgot to show you uh, something that is quite important, so I go back to annotation.bgdoc.org. Uh, sorry, I just want to show you uh, yeah the single cyanistic data. So for the fly cell atlas, for instance, here you have a download link, and here it's a H five AD file because here you have like hundreds of thousands of cells. So TSV is not a format that is convenient for so many data. So if you click here on this link, you will retrieve a H5 AD file that allows you to retrieve for each cell the complete annotation of cell type, stage, sex, strain, and with the expression values, uh, genes, the CPM values for each gene in each cell, okay? So when you go on the experiment page on BG, you always have a link to retrieve the process data 
for that experiment. And for single cell droplet based data is going to be H5 AD format, which, which is in our opinion, the best format so far to provide single cell RNA-seq data. 